Hello guys, here we are at the Reaper's Coast, so let's start right away. The most important things that you'll need to do in this huge map. Number one, Free Maester. You'll start from here, you're gonna get the waypoint, and you're gonna get up here, and Free Maester. She is very important. After that, you're gonna find her here, at Maester's house, in basement. This is a very important part for Reaper's Coast, because you wanna unlock those source points here and complete the ritual. After all, it's your main goal. Your main goal for Forjoy was to remove source colors and escape the island Forjoy. Now, the main goal is to power up, let's call it. Or better to say, get all the source points and get closer to Divinity, since you're a Godwoke. So that's gonna be the number one. Number two, get those source points. What it means, to get the source points, you need sorcerers. Or better to say, someone that can teach you how to use source, to give you source, for you to be more powerful. And... There are a few sorcerers in Reaper's Coast here. And the first one is Riker in the graveyard. The second one is Hanak here in Cloisterwood. The third one, same in Cloisterwood, is Jahan. Origin character from Divinity Original Sin 1, the Demon Hunter. He's kinda... I think he's around 2000 years old by now. And he's still chasing demons. I love that thing. They added Jahan in the game. The fourth one is the Advocate. The fifth one is here at Wrecker's Cave. But be careful about that area. And let me think if there's more, but I think not. I think this is it. I think that the witch can also teach you how to use swords, but I never did it. I took my swords from Wrecker's Cave and from Hanag, I think. Not exactly sure. I have it in my playthroughs. But I think Almira can also teach you how to use swords. So that's it about swords. You got five, six options and only three source points, so figure out what you think is best for you. Number three. Complete the ritual. About the ritual. You can complete it here in the basement. You do it like this. You'll get in the basement. You'll find... To find the bowl. There it is. A ritual bowl. And you're gonna combine ritual bowl with black root. And you're gonna stab yourself with this knife. Just use it on yourself like this. And now you get bloody obsidian lancet. So you're gonna combine all of that with this. Then you're gonna find black root. It's a bit of a mess here in my inventory, but there we go. Black root and bloody obsidian lens. You combine that, and now you get. Let's see. It's easier like this. And now you get. Ritual bowl filled with blood and black root. You place that bowl in the basement, turn the valve on, and inhale the smoke that's gonna come out, out of the bowl. And that's how you will communicate with your gods, or better to say, with your god, depending on what character you're playing. If you play Fan as a main character, you'll get God of Humans. If you play Red Lizard, you're gonna get God of Lizards, Zor Zorl's Tissa. And so on. So, lucky find. That's number three. Again, 
just in case. You do it here in the basement of Maester's house. That's where you can communicate with your gods. Plus, you got a source fountain over there, so you can fill your source points. Let's go to number four. Still, use bartering when selling gear. Very important. Ah, like 50 traders in Reaper's Coast. And they're scattered all around the area. Just try to steal from each one of them as you advance. Like, steal from 2 or 3 when you're level 12, and steal from 2 or 3 when you're level 13. So you'll get better gear. You can't steal from same trader twice. I already was talking about it in my Forjoy guide. But I feel I need to repeat it again. Now. South part of the map is easier than the north part of the map, which means graveyard, driftwood, this part here, and the middle here of the map are easier than cloisterwood, this area here, and Blood Moon Island. I think it's Blood Moon, yeah, Blood Moon Island. So stay to the south part of the map. Only Black Pits is a bit harder from south. Let's go for this. Number six, a lot of tricky quests. One playthrough is not enough. What I mean by it? Like more than a hundred quests. And every quest can be done in two or three different ways. Some characters will die, some NPCs will die, some will stay alive, uh, some will ask you to kill someone else. The same person will ask to kill the one that ordered him dead. So, it's just not enough with one playthrough. You need to go two or three times with this game, and I'll do it for sure. So, just when you play, go forward, stick with your decisions, do not load. I did it. And just, it's it's a waste of time, you know. Do different things on your next play. Just go and see where your decisions will take you. Do not waste time, because it's a huge game. Number seven. Have at least three skill sets available. What I mean by it. When you start the game, you start as like pure warfare... Or a small mix of Shadow Blade, of Scoundrel, and Polymorph. But you'll need to add more. For example, here, this is my Warfare character. He's got those Warfare skills here. But he also has Restoration and Rain. He also has some parts from Scoundrel, Adrenaline, for more action points. He's got Teleportation, because Teleportation is extremely useful. He's got everything from Polymorphy. He's got Slow, for example, from Geomancy. You get my point? That's like one point into everything. Some of it comes from gear, some doesn't come from gear. But the point is, everything into Warfare, his, his main is Warfare, and then like a few points into Polymorph, some points into Geomancy, like one, two, three points into Editurge, so you can cast Teleportation. It's very important. That goes for all characters. For example, Lass uh, comes as Enchanter with Hydra Sophie and Aeroturge. And then I added Necromancy. Because Necromancy is great with Hydra Sophie. They rhyme very, very well together. They're perfect. I, I love Lass. Now she's a fucking beast. She was very weak at the start of the game. But now she is just great. Although enemies will focus her like crazy, she always gets killed first. I don't know what's wrong with enemies, but they keep focusing Lux. They don't care about anyone else, just Lux. It's kinda annoying to be honest, but you can see my point with skills and what I wanna say. It's different than the start of the game. Same goes with Seville. Armor of Frost, Hail Strike, Rain, uh, this doesn't deal damage, but it can freeze your enemies if they're without magic armor. And you want as much crowd control as you can get your hands on. So, 
the only one that's kind of same as in Act 1 is Ifan here for me, because he's pure marksman. He just shoots with his bow and crossbow, and he stays afar and deals a lot of damage and a lot of crits. I added Pyromancy a bit, but it's not important, because Pyromancy scales with intelligence and he scales with finesse. Pyromancy is good, as I said, because of Beastle Mine and because of Haste. And Great Spell in Polymorph is also Skin Graph. It resets all your, cool, all your cooldowns and removes burning, necrofire, poison and bleeding. Skin graft is great and I love it. All of your characters, when I go with my next playthrough, and now I mean it, all of my party will have adrenaline, skin graft, peace of mind and teleportation. Those four skills are the most useful skills in game, and it's a bloody fact. Let's go. And see what's next. Have at least three skills. It's available. Eight. Keep spamming that spirit vision non-stop. Once you complete the ritual with... Your ritual bowl, when you get it on fire, as I said, smoke appears and then you communicate with your god, you will get spirit vision. Your eyes pierce the veil of the Hall of Echoes. What it means? It means this. As this. And it lasts for 10 turns. Spirit vision. Or better to say, you'll be able to see ghosts. Now, let's see if we can find some ghosts here. I think there are two ghosts here. If I have an extracted source out of them. There they are. They appear. So, about ghosts. You keep spamming spirit vision. Last for 10 turns. More venom than even the Whatever you way. are, you keep spamming them. You'll History. always get new quests. You'll always History find new stuff. You'll always have something Victus. else to do with those ghosts. Do not Once you click on them, your presence, the two spirits weave their dance You can hatred. consume their source. When you consume their the source, kings. you'll get a source point. Although I'm full, so I won't see it. It's a maximum. Better to say they don't enter the Hall of Echoes. You destroy their soul and get the source point out of it. Do not destroy all the ghosts, some of them are good, some of them are bad. Destroy those magisters, ghosts, and similar things. But don't destroy every ghost you encounter, because it's a bad thing. Next thing. So keep spamming spirit vision. Whatever you are. None bloody stop till they make this permanent. They should make spirit vision permanent. And I think they're gonna do it soon. There are mods to make Spirit Vision permanent. If you want, install those mods and play with Spirit Vision permanently on. Reaper's Coast is huge. Take your time. And I mean it. I've spent 60 hours here because I really try to do everything there is on the map. So, do not rush. Take your time with it. You'll enjoy it. Number 10, all advice is from Forjoy, apply here too. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go and check my Forjoy guide and apply all of those advices here. I like 15. Check out the video. Now let's check all the flags. God, that, this is a lot and I hope you'll stay with me. Because I'm wasting time here explaining everything. You're gonna start the game here. First, what you want to do is open all the waypoints. You open this waypoint first. This is an easy XP with some Void Walkers. Then here are some ghosts and quests. You won't be able to see the ghosts till you free Maester and then communicate with your gods in Maester's house. Here you got a very fun quest with some chickens. And that quest starts here, and you complete it all the way up here. Finish chicken quest. So it's far away. Have that in mind. You'll have a little chicken following you all around the map. I did it immediately. Finish this quest immediately. And it's very fun too. 
the next thing that you want to do after you're done with Maester is Driftwood. This is the island of Driftwood. And I really think that you should do everything there bloody is on this map before you go and fight in Reaper's Coast. So, when you enter, you go to the house, and you're gonna speak with some Magister here. Collect those quests. Check the basement, check the upper floor. Then, the traders are here. Buy some stuff, steal some stuff if you're able to. And then, you have the inn here with a lot of quests. You also have Arena in the basement of the inn. Another arena, similar to the one in Forjoy, only this time a bit harder. A lot of loot, a lot of quests, a free talent with a spider. Go check it out yourself. A lot of XP and a lot of options to steal stuff. You can enter here with Great Trader. You can either bribe him or you can talk with Sibyl or Ifan. Pick your outlaw tag and get in to Effie's Emporium. On the upper floor, you have a very good trader. You have a lot of options to steal too, and a quest. It's a quest about the Red Prince, his origin quest. Complete that, you're gonna need it. The next thing is this small house here, Mordus house, with a puzzle, a very dangerous lick, and a very hard fight for the start. So be careful, my advice is at least level 11 or 12, maybe even higher for this quest. And then we have fishery here with a basement. I highly suggest you do that one first and get a lot of easy XP in the basement of the fishery. Plus you can steal a lot of stuff from here and there are two quests here that you can finish easily. So that's how you gain a lot of XP without, well, with a little fight. But 90% of it will be conversation. Now, once you're done with Driftwood, it took me around 5, 6, maybe even more hours. You want to venture further. Do not go here. Turn back over here. Clear the Void Links. Explore around. You have a well here to get down and enter the house, or you can go with direct approach. This bridge is low, um, is up, and it lowers it down. The only way is through here. Get to the other side with a TP. You get here with a TP, cleared void walken, and then you're gonna enter the graveyard. After you're done with this, of course, you're gonna lower the bridge. Here, Tarkin will be with his quest for Anathema. The unique sword, or something like that. Explore the graveyard, and remember, with graveyard, spirit, vision, none, bloody, stop. Because there are a lot of ghosts in the graveyard, and a lot of interesting quests. Now let's begin with here. This is extremely tough fight. Have good gear, and level up. If you wanna finish this, you can leave it open. Joanna's Ray Tomb. Here is the Lizard's Graveyard. And here is a chest, you can TP the chest out. Here... Uh, it's not Tarkin, Tarkin is here. Here is Red Prince Quest. Or better to say... You get the quest here for the Red Prince in the end, upper floor, and then you're gonna continue here for his origin quest. The Elf Tree, with a lot of spirits around it. See for yourself. A very nice fight with Memorial of Hero Heroes. Be careful about the fight. You're gonna discover a lot of loot with it. A waypoint for Graveyard, and a few ways in and out of Graveyard. One two, three, so three ways in, three ways out of the graveyard. Um, a very interesting quest here, and a very difficult one, it took me more than 
20 hours to finish this quest. Have that in mind and be patient. I also have that quest. As... Well, let's call it... As a single video. On my YouTube channel if you want to check it out. Now here is a tower with eagle. If you have a pet pal perk and a lot of persuasion you can finish this quest and get the eagle for yourself or better to say you're gonna get wings as a skill as a pet you're gonna get eagle similar to spread your wings um, here is Riker one of the sorcerers you'll need and on top of this floor is a very difficult boss fight with a spider and in the basement, you can end up here again. It's a huge manor. So, take your time with it. There are a lot of ghosts inside here. Be patient. Do not kill Riker right away. You'll get to that point later on in his basement. But stick with his quest. Here... Is Endra's dog and a hidden hatch. Hatch is here. You need to kill a dog to enter here. And you're gonna find some interesting stuff down under. That would be the graveyard. The next thing that you should clear after the graveyard is maybe this area here. You get a lot of loot, a lot of animals here that you can speak with, a lot of ghosts too. You get a phoenix egg. I uploaded that video on how to solve the thing with Phoenix Egg. Uh, you'll get some silent armor from those dead magisters. You can unlock a waypoint. Uh, here you'll be able to see the bridge only if you use Spirit Vision. Because bridge is broken and this is this green thing here is that fog. Or better to say only undead characters can traverse that fog. Not the living ones, so the only way is with a bridge. And you'll need to use spirit vision for it. The next thing is Witch's House, where you find some quests and evidence about the witch. And later on, you'll fight Witch here. Extremely tough fight. She can one-shot your full team, divide them. If you have problems, you can check my videos for her and how I won the fight. Now, here also scarecrows. Have in mind, this quest can be done in two different ways. One way is to go kill those scarecrows. The other way is with altars. And that's the most difficult way, because there are three altars. One is here with boy touch deers. One is here. And one is over here. Far away. And that thing is guarded with a werewolf on steroids. That thing is huge like a fucking tower. And it's also a very hard fight. So if you want to finish Scarecrows with conversation, you gotta unlock these altars. And it's a very difficult thing to do. My advice is kill those Scarecrows. Again, if you have problems, you can always check how I did it. Here is Troll Toll, or better to say, Troll that guards the bridge. Either pay the fee and get across, or you kill him. Here is another one, even bigger one. This one is Grog, and this one is Marge. You'll have your fun with them, that is sure, they're funny as hell. At the end of my Reaper's Ghost playthrough, I killed them both, but they were alive for like 50 hours for sure, just because of life. Um, that's it for this area, nothing else to say about it. Here, you'll encounter some paladins, you're gonna get some quests, you can trade and steal here. Basically, it's a peaceful area, so... Venture there to get some items and some quests. The next area that you should go to is this one here. First, what you want to do is finish this quest. It's an easy XP. 
I don't want to spoil it. Just go there on the beach and finish it. Then care for ambushes around this area. Those fights can be, well, not hard, but still not easy. After you're done with those ambushes, you're gonna go and collect Jin Lamb. It's your decision. What do you want? I tested all five choices. Jin. I don't want to spoil it. I'll only say that I took the amulet. And there are four choices left. Reload and check out for yourself. It's an interesting quest. Really. Here is the statue of the Burning Prophet. Again, if you don't know how to activate the statue, check my video about the Burning Prophet. Here is a very tough fight. And a lot of possessed dwarves. And it leads to Wrecker's Cave. Wrecker's Cave. If you enter Wrecker's Cave from here, you'll be dead. And that's a fact. I don't want to spoil what's gonna happen, but do not enter. Go if you want to see and have a good laugh. But there is a different approach to Wrecker's Cave. And... It's from here. What you need to do is get to Cloisterwood. It's your choice. I suggest from here. So once you cross the bridge from Driftwood, get over here, pass here, circle around, and get to this point. You're gonna tip it down, unlock a waypoint, load the boat, get inside, there's a hatch right here. And then you want to go to Wrecker's Cave. This is a safe entry. And this is the way I want to finish Wrecker's Cave. Not by here. Here. And all is going to be fine. And you're going to get a source point from the cave. If you want, of course, from Orcus. Now, here you got another trader in Cloisterwood. Uh, about that black root for the ritual, here you can find plants, or better to say, black root for the main quest in this area, in Cloisterwood, behind this ruined castle. Right over here, you will get black root to complete the ritual. Have that in mind. An undead trader with his quest, her quest, sorry, it's female, and a lot of good stuff too. Hanag for source point, another sorcerer, some magisters will attack her. It's your decision if you want to go against her or go with the magisters. Of course, I killed the magisters. I never figured out what is this. And I'll probably figure it out on my second playthrough. There are some four skulls. I still don't know what to do with them. I tried like 100 different things you probably need to have pain or beast for this because I don't see the other way around it Jahan very important for Lux and her quest you need Jahan he's gonna explain you that he wants advocate that on a blood moon island and Jahan sells also some good stuff here and again, if you kill Advocate and go back to him, he's gonna give you a source point. But it's a very hard way to acquire source point. Again, stay out of this fight till you level up a lot, like level 15, 16, maybe even higher. I cheesed this fight, but I don't know, if you wanna check it, check it out. I uploaded it. It's hilarious, this thing one shots. Here, only undead can pass because of the death. The boatman is here, and he is undead. Once he gets you over here, you'll end up dead because you traverse the death. So only undead party can traverse with boat. Or living party, like mine is, the only ways with spirit vision to get to the Blood Moon Island. The next area, after Cloisterwood, and after this one, and after this one, is area here. Now, this might look huge, but there are not that many things to do around this area. We're gonna start from 
Elven Camp. There are a lot of quests in Elven Camp, a lot of good traders, and this is Seville's quest line, Seville Origin quest line. An Elf Puzzle, you have a video about Elf Puzzle. You can check it out if you want to. It's a bit difficult to be honest, so check it out. Over here, you keep spamming Spirit Vision, you have a lot of ghosts, a lot of quests, and a lot of traps to, to get to those lone wolves. Uh, lone wolves, the leader is Roost, whatever you do, you'll end up fighting Roost. Have that in mind. Again, tons of ghosts on this mini island here. You can complete Ifan and Sebil questline. There is also a lot of XP in this area. And that's about it. Roost is the main boss in this area. After you're done with this, you'll traverse here and trigger the Ancient Empire Caravan, or better to say it's a Red Prince questline. Have in mind, this fight is extremely tough. Extremely tough. Over here is an ambush with those burning houses, ruined houses, but it's not difficult. Get the XP out of there. Over here is a Harbinger of Doom, a very difficult boss fight, and his quest is connected with Almira's Succubus and a Wounded Magister. First, what you want to do is speak with Almira and then go Harbinger of Doom. Kill him, finish the quest, and get Almira on your Lady Vengeance ship. She's gonna sell some good stuff and she's important for the next act. Of course, a waypoint for Paradise Dawns. Another hidden loot with Elven Chest in this area. You'll need to fight for it. Care of this ambush close to Graveyard. On this road here, it can be tough, a very tough fight. I never figure out what's the skeleton here. I guess I'll figure it out on my second playthrough. Over here is Garrett's family's farm. And Garrett. You can finish this quest easily. That's about it for this part of the map. And the last thing is this part with Magisters. A very hard fight here. And a very good quest. I love that. In cellar hatch. Check it out before you go to the black pets. A lot of void wokens and a lot of magisters also in this area. A new waypoint. A lot of ghosts keep spamming spirit vision throughout the whole black pets. Do not forget about spirit vision. You're gonna get some quests here. You can pick if you want to kill those Magisters or side with them. If you want to go in quietly, this is your way out without fighting. This is your way out with Brute Force on the main gate. There is a quest here with a Black Sword, but you'll need to fight with Magisters here. And the most hilarious fight in the game that lasted for around 40 to 50 minutes is this one. I don't wanna spoil it. I'm gonna give one advice only. Have bless this thing on all of your characters and have source points before you enter this fight. It's hilarious. And it's gonna last very long. After you're done with this fight, you can go here. I wrote here, do not let Raymond escape. I killed Raymond. He wants to escape on the boat. And you got like two or three turns to keep him out of the boat. You can either burst him or teleport him away from here on this part of the map. I don't know what's gonna happen when Raymond escapes. I guess I'm gonna let him escape on my second playthrough. But for now, he's dead. It's also a very hard fight and it gives a lot of XP. There is a Shrieker here. The way to deal with a Shrieker. Since now you're... 
purge vampirism as shorter range is, for example, with Sibyl and her cloak and dagger skill. You sneak, you get behind the shrieker and use purge on it. That's the only way. And at the end of this map are black pits. There's one puzzle in the black pits and two, well, let's call it tough fights again with magisters and one boss fight. I don't want to spoil anything around there. If you don't know what to do with a puzzle, again, you can check my video about Black Pit's puzzle. The last thing remaining on the map now is Blood Moon Island. Island full with demons. You get five vaults. One is here and it's empty. I don't know why it's empty, but it's always empty. Never found anything in it. And these three walls here. And Blood Moon Archive. Or better to say, Vault 2. Complete those walls. There are some cursed demons there. You're gonna see when you enter. Very small maps, but very interesting fights. You can fight or you can do it with conversation it's your choice what you want to do with those demons here is the advocate connected with Jahan's quest uh, you need to kill the advocate if you want a source point out of Jahan some hidden stashes here as you can see and the main quest about the ancestor the point is advocate wants the black ring dead and they're around the Ancestor Tree. It's extremely tough fight. It's one of the hardest fights in Reaper's Coast. And what happens? If you accept the deal with the Advocate. And you accept the deal with this bloody demon. The thing is, you're gonna kill those Black Rings. You're gonna suffer a lot. And then when you're low on HP, this shithead will appear and kill you. With his units. So the way to complete this is kill the Advocate when he's alone, then go over there, kill the Black Ring, and then free the Ancestor Tree. That's about it for this area. If you don't know how to enter vaults uh, here at the Ancient Forge, you can collect some silver bars. With those silver bars, you can craft silver levers. You insert those levers. Press the lever and the vault will be opened. Do not forget to keep spamming the spirit vision here on the Demon Island too. That's about it. I covered most of the stuff. Let's call it the most important stuff. Of course, there's like 100 different things, like mini side quests that you'll do along the way. But I can cover everything in one video and I don't want to cover those mini quests. You can ask if you want about them. Number 12, buy the game. Number 13, subscribe and find me on Twitch if you want and if you like the video. And thanks for watching guys, I'll be seeing you on the next one, Nameless Isle is gonna be next.